Future Now Show. Brought to you by the Club of Amsterdam. Welcome to the Future Now Show. I'm Lise Volding. Our guests include Dr. Andreas Walker, Nick Price, and Hardy Schlor. Please meet Hardy Schlor presenting his thoughts on the future of privacy. Hardy, go ahead. Well, I think that's an interesting subject, especially when we <coughs> understand that over the last, let's say, two, three thousand years, um, humanity has has evolved through networks, and these these networks they used to be roadways in which we could go from one neighbor to another. Uh, from one country to another, and um, the Romans started building roads to all of Europe and all the way into the Middle East uh, to move their troops. And as we created all these technologies, later the railroads and the cars and then computer networks and so on and so forth, we learned faster and faster from each other information. Now we are living in a world that exponentially fast networks everything with everything. So that means that um, although we, we still hang on to this wish, you know, uh, we want to keep our emails private and our SMS messages private and whatever have you, none of it is. None of it has been in a very long time. And I think the, the future will be, and the future is, is just about now, where we realize that we got to give up on all of that. Where we need to realize that our most personal emails may be published on the front page of the New York Times tomorrow. And that will usher in a completely new conscience amongst people because I believe that they will become much more accepting of all the dark things that everyone may have inside his private life, you know, that we are considered now dark, that we may later not consider dark at all. They we consider them standard, normal. Mm. And um, there will be a, a extremely open understanding about what people think, what they feel, what they do, especially in groups. And it may it may raises Val it may change values, it may change laws, it may change the way we are uh, become accepting of each other uh, in, 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 in ways that may not be positive um, if we're not careful, but uh, in, in, in any way they will change us in a, in a traumatic way. And um, since we have some really good experts today here on these on these panels, um, I would like to just throw the question out to you. How do you believe that the complete loss of even the ability to keep anything private, any SMS, anything you say, any, any phone call, anything will be out there and will be accessible to anyone, how will that change us? Nick. I, well, I've, got a, I've got a couple of things. The first thought as you were speaking is that problem where our lives, where we are many different people, you know, our lives change and we make different decisions, and suddenly everything becomes flat. So yes. people are presented with a flat picture of us, not in the context of what we did at the time when we made a decision. So something that I've always associated with that is forgiveness. And so, um, you know, you forgive. You might be harder on yourself than you would on a friend <laughs> who's done something. So, you're always being judged retrospectively. So, I think forgiveness is an is a quality that we will develop. Um, the uh, yeah. The the other thing that came to mind is um, uh, the, the problem we have where the information is open publicly, 
but being judged within different value systems. You mentioned value systems in different ideological domains. So where you are published might be different to being where you are judged. We don't have a flat um, judicial or governance system yet. Andrea? Yeah, I, I like your ideas. Thank you very much. Also in Switzerland we see this development. We have had some huge scandals there some politicians, some ministers have sent around SMS messages but, uh, with sexual harassment topics and like that. And everybody is talking about that now. But um, uh, I have some quite uh, new ideas. I think we are just going back. We are not talking about the future. We are talking about the past time. What we have now is just the situation as in a farmer's village in the 19th century. And I have the idea that the concept of privacy was not normal. The concept of privacy was an exception in the 19th and 20th century. If I go back into the medial age, we have had this, let's have a look at the medial uh, uh, towns in the middle age. Houses are so close together. Rooms are so small. Family is living in one room. If you go to a village, everybody knows everything about everything. For us, it's just new. For us, it's a huge challenge because we are people of the 20th century. But I guess the 21st century will be similar to the situation in the 16th or 17th century where nobody has known the concept of privacy. We will lose something. I think this is the best point on privacy that I have ever heard. This is actually very interesting and that never occurred to me and it's absolutely 100% true. I think we are going back to where we once were when everyone knew everything about everyone uh, uh, close by and, and uh, when we also were a lot more accepting of what people were doing. Now we have all this zero tolerance stuff and that has driven us actually into privacy. The more laws, the more rules, the more filters, the more <clears throat> unacceptable behavior we began to defining, the more people had to go into the underground to hide it. I mean... That's uh, correct, Hardy. I, I would like to speak to that for a minute. The poignancy of it is that while privacy is eroding, it does create a culture of transparency and a culture of transparency requires a level of authenticity when you're engaging with people which when we are authentic, when we are honest, establishes a level of trust and so you see the the poignant breakdown of a lot of these tools of fear and entrainment uh, through ironically the erosion of privacy I'm thinking as an example just yesterday, of course, the release of the CAA report on torture and the wide-scale response of the average American citizen. I was interested in something that um, Hardy was talking about, uh, about uh, the, the, um, the judgment that's placed on, by, on us by a lot of people. So it's not so much unacceptable behavior, but unacceptable differentiation. What does the, how the mob flattens us out into a grey, uh, anodyne world. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. that's true. That's true. Very interesting. I learned something very amazing about privacy through you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay. Nick, you have given us a good input regarding forgiveness and privacy. Yesterday I have had a workshop with a Swiss foundation. It's called Swiss Peace. They are very active together with the uh, United Nations and with the uh, Red Cross and so to bring peace to countries. Okay. And they are looking for uh, cultural approaches, they are looking for um, methods how to do it. And you are speaking about forgiving, they are speaking about reconciliation. That we need reconciliation to bring peace. And that's, for me, similar like the, uh, the culture of forgiving somebody. Yeah, I think they're, they're Andreas, thank you for bringing that up. That's actually a beautiful point, Nick. I'd, I'd actually like to speak to that and help frame that a bit. 
Nelson Mandela in South Africa in the practice of reconciliation where you're dealing with huge, huge, huge wounds of populations and what could have been a wide-scale bloody, bloody, bloody war um, was not because of the practice of forgiveness and reconciliation. I have, um, my mother actually does a lot of work in South, of Af South Africa and when you see the levels of hope in the average person who is, say, dealing with, um, in, in this particular case, we're talking about orphans and orphan-headed households as a result of AIDS. So babies, mamas, children, so full of joy, so full of forgiveness, so full of life and hope in the face of such horrific circumstances. And it, it's that, that directly is a, as an offshoot of reconciliation as a practice that that I think is so exquisite and shows how we are capable of transcending those things. And I'd love to hear from each of you on that. I think forgiveness allows you to put things down. It allows you to put negative emotion down to allow you to allow hope in and and moving forward in a positive way. That's how that's how I see it's a powerful tool. Beautiful. Thank you, Nick. I think that for, for forgiveness should actually um, be perhaps in many cases at least replaced by a a much looser and and, and and much more human adoption of rules of of how we how we how we behave. I mean just one very short example. In the olden days if a couple of guys got rough in a bar and they smacked each other one because they had a couple of too many drinks, you know, the, the, the barkeeper would come out, smack both of them and say, stop this now, you go on one side of the bar, you go on the other and that's it. Uh, nowadays, the police comes, arrests both of them, puts them in jail, three months later, there will be a court date, you know, and they will have a, a record for battery on, 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 on their... Uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the record. So, so w w what we have, uh, or the same with school children, you know. I mean, you, you, you catch a school child, you know, uh, drinking alcohol, you know, next thing, you know, he's losing his uh, um, uh, scholarship for the next year or, or whatever have you, you know. I mean, horrible things, you know. We, we, we got to all. Um, start to be a lot more loose and, and give each other a lot more room to trial and error and make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I think our society has completely lost that. Yeah. And that's very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I think that's very good. Party, thank you. And Andreas? Yeah, I absolutely agree. That's one of the points in Switzerland now. To handle complexity, often you just have to test the situation. We do not know everything. As more as more it is complex, we, we have to find out, and we have to find out by a trial and error principle. But in fact, n everybody is afraid to make mistakes, so nobody's doing nothing. Mm. <laughs> thank there you. we have to change the culture. <laughs> Absolutely. That is point. true. Good Gentlemen, point. thank you. I, we're going to, we need to wrap for time now. Uh, I'm going to give my closing statements. I just want to thank you all for joining us and thank you. sharing some thoughts and some fire. Thank you for joining us. Let's build a better world. <laughs>